Thank you very much. Thanks very much for the opportunity to uh, present this topic today. Always lap, small bowel obstruction. Um, I have these uh, disclosures, which will not affect my, uh, the content of my presentation. So what I'm hoping to discuss with you over the next eight minutes is uh, a brief review of the literature in the time that I have, some selected studies that we've published, and uh, talk to you and present to you really why I think the laparoscopic approach to a bowel obstruction is one that you should always consider in your patients. And then I'm going to talk about some uh, tips and tricks around patient selection and technical issues and show you some, some, some videos of uh, successes and some failures also. Um, so, laparoscopy and small bowel obstruction, originally this was actually considered a contraindication, uh, patients with a bowel obstruction, and, and it was uh, traditionally considered that laparotomy should be the, you know, the treatment of choice. Uh, first described in 1991 was the first case that, that was done in a, a patient with a single band that was lysed laparoscopically, and there have been many case series and uh, case reports since then. Um, now, in looking at the benefits of laparoscopy, like decreased length of stay, fewer wound-related complications, decreased risk of incisional hernias, and as well, the risk of having, or the, the lowered risk of having more bowel obstructions in the future by approaching this laparoscopically, there is no reason to believe that if you're able to do the case laparoscopically, that these benefits would not apply to patients with a bowel obstruction. So why have surgeons been slow to adopt this approach? Well, there's no question that these cases are technically more challenging. They're often considered reoperative surgery. Uh, patients have distended bowel, visualization is poor, and there's no question you have less working space and a concern about injuring the thin-walled uh, distended bowel also. So I'm going to present to you a series of, of studies, two of which we did at University Health Network in Toronto. The first here was looking at our own experience of 269 patients, um, and you can see that 69% uh, uh, were approached in an open fashion and 30% laparoscopically, and we had about one-third uh, were converted uh, to open in the laparoscopic group. And we found, similar to uh, many, many published studies, that return of GI function was quicker by one day in the laparoscopic group, the length of stay was shorter by two days in the laparoscopic group, and overall complications were also fewer in the laparoscopic group. Now, of course, in all of these studies, the first, um, the first thing that comes to mind is that, well, there's going to be a selection bias towards doing the easier cases laparoscopically. That is absolutely a fair criticism. In this particular case, we tried in doing a multivariate analysis uh, uh, we found that adjusted odds ratio for overall complications was still lower in the uh, laparoscopic group. But nevertheless, I think you can't get away from that argument that surgeons in selecting these patients are choosing the less sick, easier patients to do laparoscopically. But I would argue that that is not a reason to think of laparoscopy for every single patient. Uh, now, this was a, uh, we took a different approach here, looking at the NISQIP uh, database over a 10-year period, almost 5,000 patients. You can see that 80% of them were managed open, 19.3 uh, laparoscopically. And again, we found the length of stay was significantly longer in the open group and about half in the laparoscopic group. In this particular study, we deliberately excluded all patients who required a bowel resection. And the reason was that we wanted to try to compare apples to apples and try to minimize that selection bias. But again, I would you know, postulate that there, there is still a selection bias, even though we try to control for it. And you can see that, again, the adjusted odds ratio for overall complications was more than 50% less in the laparoscopic group. This is a more um, recent study uh, um, published in 2016. Uh, systematic review, almost 40,000 patients, and you can see, again, similar findings, reduced risk of morbidity, um, reduced risk of mortality, less surgical site infections uh, in the laparoscopic group. There was an increased risk of bowel resection in the open group, again, suggesting that uh, the patients where uh, they were thought to need a bowel resection were likely being done in the open group as well. Um, I'm presenting this uh, particular uh, paper, and Dr. Matthews, uh, our uh, chairperson, is one of the co-authors here. Specifically, um, Dr. Matthews and Todd Henneford uh, 
looked at their experience of a series of 340 uh, patients and those that they were able to complete laparoscopically. But the, what was more interesting about th uh, this paper was they looked at factors that they felt were associated with a decreased chance of needing to convert to laparotomy. So as you start to think of approaching all of these uh, uh, cases laparoscopically, or at least thinking of that approach, which factors would make it less likely that you would need to convert? So minimal abdominal distension, uh, a patient that has a proximal obstruction, or surgery in a limited uh, quadrant, like an appendectomy or cholecystectomy, and no severe adhesions documented on a previous OR note, and then ability to safely access the um, peritoneal cavity. So that segues into some of my uh, uh, tips and tricks and, and pointers uh, for the second half of this presentation. So as you, as you consider this approach for all of your patients, how can you do that safely? So first, again, select your patients, especially if you are starting to do these cases laparoscopically and you're earlier on in your experience. Uh, Preoperative CT is very helpful. Um, and as I mentioned in my previous slide, so patients with a bowel distension of less than four centimeters on imaging, a proximal obstruction, or small incarcerated hernias, these are all cases that you will be more likely to complete laparoscopically. What equipment do you need to do these cases safely? I think you definitely need a 30 degree laparoscope to help you be able to look around corners. A five millimeter scope, I would argue, is key because as you put in your first trocar, the five millimeter scope, I always say fives are free. So as you work your way around the abdomen, you can do so easily adding more five millimeter ports rather than tens if you're using a 10 millimeter scope. Very important to have good bowel graspers, good atraumatic bowel graspers as well so that you can minimize the risk of bowel injury. Um, now, I would strongly discourage you from using a varus needle or a blind uh, trocar access technique. I think you should use an open Hassan technique, even if you're off the midline avoiding prior incisions. I think that will help you decrease the risk of a injury on, on access. And then once you get your camera in, then you can say, okay, where do I put my next trocar? Where is there space? You want to do that under direct visualization, avoid areas of dense adhesions, and start to create that working space for yourself. Uh, so this is a photo here of a case that we did. You can see we uh, went in on the left, which I think if you can is the preferred side because it allows you to then triangulate towards the terminal ileum where hopefully the bowel will be collapsed and then you can start to run the bowel proximally from there. And then other important technical points is that you really only need to lyse relevant bands. So don't feel like you need to lyse every uh, adhesive band in the abdomen. If you find the point of obstruction and you're confident that you've dealt with the problem, then I think it's perfectly reasonable to, to stop there. You want to be very careful with how you handle the bowel and again, minimize the use of energy sources. And I think one of the key take home messages is that convert early so that there's no harm in putting in the scope if you do it very carefully, but if you see that the, ch uh, the case is going to be too challenging, uh, give yourself a time limit and then convert uh, once you reach that time or if you think that, that there's a risk that you will injure the bowel. If you see ischemic bowel, then you can uh, you know, try to bring it up through a small incisions and then finish the case through a smaller uh, laparotomy. So I'm going to show you a, a series of very short videos I have um, three videos, um, and again, they're, they're not long. So this is a, a more straightforward case. You can see that was the case actually of the patient with the, um, the photo with the, um, the three trocars. You can see we're putting a five millimeter port under direct visualization, and then we're gonna um, start distally and work our way proximally, and you'll see there's an adhesion, a fairly dense adhesion uh, to the anterior abdominal wall right here, and so by, again, not using any energy, so that's an important point. If you can stay extra peritoneal, that's, that's great. I'm just gonna move this forward in the interest of time. You can see some old proline sutures there. <coughs> Finish these last few adhesions. And then you're going to want to inspect that loop of bowel carefully, and you can see we weren't concerned whatsoever. We're going to run the bowel, again, through that segment from the collapsed portion to the more um, uh, uh, dilated portion and really convince ourselves that there's, you know, that was the, the issue of, uh, 
the point of obstruction. I'm going to go to the next video. Um, and, you know, that case is done. So, you know, you, you've clearly saved that patient a, a, a huge laparotomy and, and, and all of the comorbidity that's associated with that. Um, and I would say, you know, often it's those cases where there's a really a lot of adhesions on the abdomen and, and we're on call with the residents and fellows and I think there's no way you're going to be able to do that case laparoscopically. And just by putting in the camera, you just never know until you actually put the scope in and have a look. Um, I'm just going to go to the next, is it possible to advance? To, uh, to the next slide. So this case, again, shows you uh, another benefit. There would be no harm when you see this in converting to open right away. I, I think the color looks a bit worse on this monitor. We thought, um, you know, the bowel was actually still peristalsing, and, you know, one of the benefits of keeping the loop of bowel in the abdomen is that it stays nice and warm. Um, we lysed these adhesions. Clearly, there was a closed loop obstruction here. You can see there was a dense band here at the first point. Carefully divided that. And there's another band here, we divided this. And then immediately when we did that, the bowel started to pink up. Uh, we waited several minutes, you know, a good 10 to 15 minutes. You wanna be obviously very careful with how you handle the bowel here. But you can see as we start to run it back, it's already gonna be looking uh, better than it did when we started. So we, uh, you know, we, we kept looking at that bowel and we left it and, you know, the patient did fine, went home in a few days. You can see the bowel is already starting to look better. So I'm, um, if we could go on to the next slide, I only have uh, just one more point that I want to make. And again, is that this is a study that looked at in the cases that were converted, the highest morbidity uh, was going to be in those that had an interoperative complication versus if you convert early and there was no uh, complication, then the morbidity is really going to be no greater. And so I learned this lesson the hard way. In case you think we sort of come up here and show you all of our nice and best videos, I'll show you this video here. This was early in my experience more than 10 years ago. Um, patient had a closed loop bowel obstruction. Um, fast forward here. And this is a case of me just trying to be too aggressive. You can see there's clearly a loop of dead bowel here. So again, you've lost nothing. You've put the camera in, convert to open, right? Uh, in my mind, I was thinking, oh, you know, if I can just untwist this loop of bowel, then I can make a smaller incision. And, uh, you know, as opposed to, to having to make a bigger laparotomy incision. And so I, I persisted for too long. Um, and... You'll see what happens here. There you go. Thank you. So, uh, you know, felt badly, obviously, and I learned that lesson the hard way. The patient ultimately did fine, uh, but, you know, uh, I think the, the point of that video is, is to just bring home that point that um, really convert early. I think you absolutely should consider a laparoscopic a approach in every patient. Uh, you should put in the laparoscope and have a look, but convert early, and I think that your patients will benefit for it. Thank you very much.